outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. The Black Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Coming up, it's a 13-episode radio serial of the story Frankenstein, produced by and starring George Edwards as Baron Victor Frankenstein, and I'm bringing you the entire radio serial at once in this single episode. This series came out the same year as the classic Boris Karloff film, 1931, ending its broadcast run in 1932. It is a rarely heard vintage radio dramatization of the story and as such, I've not been able to find too much information about it to verify anything other than the title and the star, simply because we are told that in the actual audio. One thing I was able to find is that this was also released as an LP, and on the cover was Boris Karloff in monster makeup, although he is nowhere to be heard in the actual recording. The thought is that perhaps this radio serial was intended to pre-promote the film, but that is simply a guess. Each of the episodes is approximately 13 minutes long, and when the following episode begins, it gives you a recap of the previous episode. I could have tried to edit all of that out, but I think listening to old radio shows exactly as they were presented is much more interesting. So while it does lengthen the total time it takes to listen to the full story, you'll know you're getting the entire broadcast series in full. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows. Turn off your lights and come with me into the weird darkness as we listen to Frankenstein, starring George Edwards from 1931. journey of exploration towards the North Pole. He was homeward bound, but unfortunately the icy grip of the northern winter closed in, and the voyager was surrounded by great blocks of solid ice. Her captain and crew were prepared for a weary wait before the thaw set in, and they could continue their journey home. Shortly after noon, Captain Walton and his first mate, Mr. Boyd, were standing on the deck of the voyager. They looked out across the icy waste. Well, Mr. Boyd, I think we will be here for quite a considerable time yet. There is no sign of a thaw setting in. Uh, the trouble is to keep the crew occupied, Captain. And they're beginning to grumble a good deal already. Mm, well, we'll give them as much work as we can. After all, we were prepared for something like this. We have ample supplies of provisions. I will take all responsibility for my men. I can promise you that they will all return safely to England. Why? Are they with you, Mr. Boyd? Look there. Coming across the ice. A man. Are all the crew accounted for, Mr. Boyd? No, I... Yes, Ahoy there! Good morning. The ship here. Lord, I want to be 
This is another figure of my tortured brain. I can assure you this is a ship. Give order that the to be helped aboard, Mr. Boyd. Aye, aye, sir. What ship is this? Whither are you bound? My men are coming to help you aboard now, sir. Bring him up that rope ladder. Steady there. Thank you, Pierce. Speak good English. Yeah? I wonder where he came from. I can't understand it. Man wandering about all alone out here. The wind and the snow is howling about. Oh, they're bringing him aboard now, sir. Who is the captain of this statue? I am the captain. My name is Walt. I fear there is the special bound. We have been on a voyage of exploration towards the North Pole. As we commenced our journey homeward, the ice closed in on us. We are staying here until the thaw sets in. May I crave your hospitality and shelter? Most well, certainly, sir. May I ask your name? Victor Baron Frankenstein. I am ill and weak. Careful, he will fall. All right, sir, I have him. I, I must express my sorrow for the trouble I am causing you, Captain. But I am seeking shelter. Then my quest must go on. I must always go on. I cannot die till I find that evil, that demon, which I unloosed upon the world. You speak strange words, sir. <laughs> Forgive me. If I can but crave your kindness, some food, and I will... Mr. Boyd, take Baron Frankenstein below to my cabin. Uh, See that he is made comfortable there. Give him food and drink. Let the ship's sergeant attend to him. You are giving him your cabin, sir? Why not? You have my orders. Have a hammock slung for me in the cabin. Aye, aye, sir. Uh. Well, Mr. Boyd, how does the stranger progress? Uh, we put him to bed, sir. He slept for quite a long time. He seems better now, but I think his mind is rambling. Why do you say that? Well, every anon he speaks of some demon, some fearful monster, who peers through the portal. We had to use force on one occasion to persuade him to return to his bed. Strange. Perhaps his wanderings have deranged his mind. Do you think it is safe to leave him without a guard? Do you think we should take the precaution of locking your door, sir? Uh, he appears to be a gentleman. Darcy has a strange story to tell. Has he mentioned anything which might supply a key to this mystery? Or why he was wandering about here in these icy wastes? He said that he was searching for an evil spirit, for a destroyer, a taker of human life. There's something about the man which makes me afraid, sir. Oh, boy, the man could do you no harm. I will go down and speak with him myself. Do you wish me to accompany you, Captain? No. I will go alone. But uh, should he become violent? Oh, the man is weak and ill. How can he become violent? He struggled with us when we dragged him away from the porthole. He said he must be watching. Forever watching. Poor devil. I will try to persuade him to tell me his story. Wait here on deck, boy. I will send for you if I need you. in this cabin. Why are you keeping me a prisoner? I am considering your own safety. Considering my own safety? I tell you, sir, my life means nothing to me. I wish to repair the great wrong which I have done. My friends, my family, they have all been murdered. And I am the murderer. You know not what you say. Look on me, Captain. You are looking on a man who unleashed a horror on this world. A man who was responsible for the murder of his beloved wife, his best friend, for the murder of little children. Are you a fugitive from justice? I am not a fugitive. I have been punished because I tried to usurp the rights of God. Now I seek to repair the wrong which I did. 
I do not understand you. Did your sailors keep a close watch? Somewhere in these white wastes, somewhere near here, there is a monster, a creature who delights in taking human life. None of you is safe. Your wanderings and your hardships have caused you to imagine these things. No, I swear it is the truth. Near this vessel, I saw a giant footprint in the snow. It must have been the footstep of the monster. The monster which I created. Would you like to tell me something of your story? Captain Vulcan, I do not know if you will believe my story when I tell it to you. Perhaps you may have proof. Perhaps someday you will look upon this monster. And may heaven grant that you do not. If it will help you to tell me about it, Baron Frankenstein, I assure you I will make a ready listener. Uh, be seated, Captain. I have told you that my name is Baron Victor Frankenstein. I was born in Geneva, and my family is one of the most distinguished in that republic. My father had filled several public situations with honor and reputation. He was respected by all who knew him for his integrity. So you can see, sir, that I grew up in the most ideal surroundings. When I was 17, my parents sent me to the University of Ingolstadt, and there I became interested in science. During my attendance at the university, my beloved mother died. I returned home for a brief while, and whilst at home, I fell deeply in love with my cousin Elizabeth, and I determined to marry her as soon as my course at the university had been completed. I returned to Ingolstadt and continued with my studies. I read deeply, and gradually a most dreadful thought occurred to me from my readings and my studies. I realized that it would be possible for man to create man. I became aware of the tremendous power of electricity. I was caught once in a terrific thunderstorm. I observed how the lightning had split an oak tree in half. And the knowledge came to me that just as electricity can destroy life, so can it create then and there, my horrible resolve was born. I vowed that I would not rest until I had created a man. This seems incredible, Baron Frank. Oh, it may seem incredible to one who is not acquainted with science, but I studied and experimented, and when I retired from the university, I begged my father to build me a laboratory near our old home. He agreed to do this, and then I took into my confidence an old family servant called Julio. The man was crippled, but he had a keen and agile brain, and he was interested in my experiments. For months we worked. I intended to create a creature who would be both strong, good to look upon, and noble. Are you speaking the truth, Baron Frankenstein? I swear that I speak the truth. Did you succeed with this monstrous project? I swear a holy oath that I succeeded. I created a man. I usurped the rights. Oh, God, did I say I created a man? That is not the truth. I created a monster. A monster? Why, you might well shudder, Captain Walton. I will tell you the story of the creation of this monster. I will tell you why you found me wandering about the white race. How did you get here? I chartered a ship. I paid a crew. We were wrecked upon an iceberg and all perished save one person... I was the miserable person who lived on because I had to live. I cannot die until I have destroyed that which I have created. But if you created this monster in Geneva, what is it doing here out in the white waste of the north? Oh, I am tired, my friend. The story is too dreadful and horrible. Let me regain my strength so that I may complete my work. What I have created must be destroying oh, my poor fellow. I assure you that we will give you every care and attention. Still you do not believe me. By the way, what was that? 
the monster entered here aboard the vessel. That was the most ghastly laugh I have ever heard. Open the door. Let me complete my work now. <laughs> Did you hear that? Stand aside. Oh, we shall not open this door. Mr. Boyd! Mr. Boyd! Come on, one can bring a prisoner with you. The good ship Voyager was held fast in the northern ice pack. The captain and crew were astonished when a stranger came staggering across the ice and asked for shelter. This stranger was Baron Victor Frankenstein. He was placed in the captain's cabin, and then he commenced to tell his story. Shortly afterwards, however, a ghastly laugh was heard outside the cabin door. Frankenstein weakly attempted to get out of bed, but the captain pushed him back and called to the first officer to come to his aid. Captain Walton, you are condemning your first officer to death. A monster is out there. A blood-crazed, conscienceless beast. Oh, let me go. You are weak and ill. You can do nothing, Baron Frankenstein. Captain, what happened? Did you bring a pistol? Yes, from the tank. I take out from anywhere. Is there anyone out there now? No one, sir. Very well. I shall unlock the door. Now, come in. What did you see? Tell us what happened. I heard the captain calling, and I dashed down the companionway. Then, out of the darkness, a huge figure seemed, seemed to leap at me. I was knocked aside. When I arose, there was... No sign of anyone. I dashed up on deck again. There was no one there. The man on watch reports that he saw nothing. The monster was here. You are lucky to be alive. I believe your story now, friend Frankenstein. I created that monster. And I must live until I kill him. That is my sole task on this earth. What I created, so I will destroy. What do you mean, sir? It is a strange story, Mr. Boyd. The Baron Frankenstein is too exhausted to talk anymore tonight. Pray remain in the bunk bed. I must try to get to sleep. I must recover my strength. I must have strength enough to kill the monster. You shall have every care and attention here. I will place a man on guard outside your door. I do not think the monster will return tonight. The storm has become worse. The blizzard is raging now. It would be difficult for anyone to live out there. Let us trust that this monster perishes in the storm. I am to be called if any sign is seen of him. In the meanwhile, uh, let me sleep. Then on tomorrow, if I feel refreshed, I will tell all my story, Captain Walton. Very well, Baron Frankenstein. Mr. Boyd? You will go up on deck now, and you will arrange for two men to stand guard outside this door. I will share your cabin with you tonight. Aye, aye, sir. I bid you good night, Baron Frankenstein. We will meet on the morrow. Yes, Captain. I, I, I feel much better. Was there any sign of the monster during the night? Nothing was seen. Please be seated. I know that you are interested in my story and you are puzzled by these strange happenings. I am extremely puzzled. Well, I told you that after I left the university, my father built a laboratory near our house. Each day I used to spend hours in this laboratory working with my servant, Julio. 
Day after day, I read and studied so that my great experiment would be a success. Sometimes by night, Julio and I would visit graveyards to exhume freshly buried bodies. I was going to make a man, and the creature of my making was to be beautiful. I slaved and labored, neglecting my family and my friends, neglecting my fiancée, Elizabeth. It so happened that at that time, my greatest friend, Ernst Claval, came to stay at our home. He had been at the university with me, and he had a vague inkling as to the nature of my experiment. However, I had become sullen and morose. I shunned my friend, and as my experiment neared completion, well, I became possessed by a strange, tense excitement. Imagine me in my laboratory late one afternoon, Captain Walton. I glanced out of the window and saw that the sky was dark and overcast. My servant, Julio, stood by my side. Now and again, he would glance over at the great bench on which lay a huge inanimate figure swayed around with yards of bandages. I walked over to where the figure lay. Julio followed me. Julio, I have news for you. I think that tonight uh, uh, we'll see the end of our work. Do you mean that the figure will come to life tonight, my master? I hope so. If the threatened thunderstorm takes place, there will be sufficient electricity to bring light to this inanimate mass. Look at it, Julio. At present, it is a lifeless mass shaped in the form of a man. For months, we have worked over it. Tonight, if the storm breaks, we shall raise this figure to the top of the tower in the laboratory, and there... It will stay for one hour while the thunder crashes and the lightning flashes. Then we shall lower the body onto this bench once again. The wrappings will be taken off and who knows? I may have created a man. Think of it, Julio. My work will be rewarded. I am afraid, Master. We should not do this. Fool, why are you afraid? I am about to make a name for myself. I will be the greatest man in the world. (laughs) Because I have created another in my own likeness. Throughout the centuries, men have tried to do this, but I will succeed. I know it. You may not be meant to succeed. Who is there? It is clever here. May I come in, Victor? Yes. All right, Julio. Unlock it all. Oh, thank you. I wondered if I might want you at work. Ernst. Uh, The time is right now for you to share my secret. My experiments are almost at an end. I suspect the nature of your experiments, Victor. And I almost dread to ask if my suspicions are correct. Look on this bench. Tell me what you see, Ernst. A huge, inanimate figure swathed around with bandages. My creation... Tonight, this figure shall have life. Victor, you must not do it. Man is not meant to do that. Or you are like Julio. He is also afraid. I want to speak with you privately. Bid Julio be gone. You may go, Julio. But be here tonight at 7 o'clock. We shall wait for the storm to break. The clouds are banking up now. I will obey you, my master. Victor, your life is bound up in this strange experiment which I do not think for one moment will succeed. But might I point out that you are in love with a very beautiful and charming girl. You are neglecting her, and she feels this neglect keenly. Cleval, my friend, I know that I have been neglecting Elizabeth, but she will be proud of me, proud to marry me. I will be hailed as the greatest scientist the world has ever known. I beg of you to desist in this experiment. Do not try to bring life to this body tonight. Destroy what you have already done. Then marry Elizabeth and go away somewhere for a long holiday. You do not look well, my friend. I have been working too hard. 
But you ask too much of me, Ernst. I cannot give up my life's work. Do you love your work more than you do, Elizabeth? No, I'm... I love Elizabeth very dearly. But I must do something with my life. I have always wanted to be a great scientist. My discovery will revolutionize the world. It will be possible to make men. Do you not understand? It is not possible. Experiments like this are not meant to succeed. You are usurping the right of God. You are my best friend. You cannot seriously ask me to give up this work. I am going to ask you to be here in this laboratory with me tonight to watch as I unbind the bandages from this figure and to know that my experiment has succeeded. Very well, Victor. Since you insist. But I do think you should take Elizabeth into your confidence. Let her come here tonight. Oh, she will be afraid. We will all be afraid. But without wishing to dampen your ardor, let me assure you that I do not think this experiment will succeed. Uh, we shall see. Well, come with me now. Speak to Elizabeth. Tell her that you have been neglecting her and ask her to be present tonight. I will do that. We will go and seek out Elizabeth now. Well, Captain, I sought out my fiancée. I told her the truth. At first she was horrified, but gradually she became interested and she consented to be present in the laboratory that night. After dinner, the storm developed rapidly. The thunder roared and there were great streaks of forked lightning. Together, Elizabeth Ernst and myself went to the laboratory. There we found Julio awaiting us and I led the way to the bench on which lay the inanimate figure. When we reached the bench... Well, my friends, I feel that you are about to witness one of the most extraordinary things in the annals of the world's history. Before you, you see a great inanimate figure entirely covered in bandages. By means of police, Julio and I will raise that figure to the top of the tower where it will remain for an hour. Then we will lower it and I think the figure will have life. No, you cannot do it, Victor. You must not. I am afraid. Elizabeth, you said you had confidence in me. Will you promise me this, Victor? If the experiment is a failure, will you marry me and let us go away together? Never attempt to do this again. It is madness. I promise that if the experiment is a failure, I will discontinue all attempts. Now, does that satisfy you, Elizabeth? It does. Oh, do not worry, Elizabeth. I feel sure that this experiment cannot succeed. You hope it does not succeed, Ernst, but we shall see. The storm is at a tight now. Come, Julio. Help me to place the body on the lift. Now, careful. Roll it over. Victor, I beg of you. Do not do it. Hi, please. Now, Julio, pull the ropes and I will assist you. Pull. See, my friend, the body is going up to the tower. There it will be exposed to the full fury of the storm. Watch. The lightning frightens me. But this is a dreadful storm. The body is in place now. It will remain there for an hour. We must be patient. We will wait here. And in an hour's time, I will lower the body, unwrap the bandages, and perhaps I will have created... Please proceed, Baron Frankenstein. Tell me what happened. I can tell you no more today, Captain. I am weary now. And the memory of the past upsets me. Please be patient. I will be patient. I will leave you to rest now, but I will return later, anxious to hear the remainder of your story. Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein had taken refuge on the ship Voyager, which was icebound somewhere near the North Pole. The Baron was weak and ill, and the captain and his officers did their best to restore him to health. Gradually he told them his story, and he explained to the captain of the attempts he made to create a man. Do you 
feel able to tell me any more of your story now, Baron Frankenstein? Somewhere out in those white wastes, there is something which must be destroyed. The thought of it is driving me mad. If only I could regain my strength. If only I could continue my quest. Please do not distress yourself. The surgeon tells me that you are making an excellent recovery. I want to hear about your great experiment. Well, I told you how my fiancée, Elizabeth, and my friend, Ernst Claval, and myself waited in the laboratory during the violent thunderstorm while up above us, exposed to the full fury of the storm, lay the lifeless body which I had made. For a full hour, we watched, and everyone seemed to be agitated. My servant, Julio, crouched in a corner, and ever and anon cast fearful glances up above. At last, the hour passed, and I motioned to Julio to move over towards the pulley. Ernst and Elizabeth followed me, and I said, Come, Julio. The body has been there for a full hour now. It is time to lower it. My, my hands are trembling with excitement, for soon I shall know whether I have created a man. Stop. I make one more appeal to you, Victor. Do not proceed with that experiment. When you bring that body down, I beg you to destroy it. After experimenting on it for months and months? Oh, what you ask is too much. I also add my pleas to those of Elizabeth. Well, I must turn a deaf ear to your pleas. Help me with this story, Julio. I will, my master. But I am afraid the devil stalks abroad tonight. Ah, oh, that is nonsense. I am a scientist. I am conducting an experiment. Now lower it gently. The storm seems to have a base to the I seldom remember a worse storm. The thunder is still feeling. It is a fitting night for devil's work. <laughs> there, this is not devil's work, Ernst. It is an achievement in the field of science. Now, roll the body off the lift. Come on. Gently, Julio. Over here. Fast hand. Close, all of you. What are you going to do? I'm going to unwrap the bandages. We'll start here. Nothing will happen. Nothing can happen. Oh, I feel that I must pray. Please, please do not let this creature have life. We should all pray. It is not too late to stay your hand, Victor. Right. I feel sure that I am on the verge of success. I am removing the wrappings now. Look! The storm is increasing again. It sounds almost as if the voice of the heavens is protesting. Look, Captain Face. It is horrible. I did not mean the face to be like that. I thought it would be beautiful. This skin is all drawn tight. It is awful. Oh. This is ghastly. There is no sign of life. Great. I will remove the other bandages. We have never seen the hideous, bestial face. No creature like that could have life. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. What ails you? Dying it. I swear, I saw them flood you. The eyelids did move. No, no. We must be dreaming. The eyes open. The horrible creature is looking at us. No. It has closed its eyes again. Julio, dark in the room. The light is too strong. My master, let me take this hammer. Let me destroy the creature. You heard my orders. Lower the lights. I will obey. Look, it is raising one arm. It has life. My experiment has succeeded. I have created life. I am the greatest man the world has ever known. No other man has had such power. Victor, this is too horrible. Destroy it now. Destroy it now would be murder. 
Oh, no, this creature is terrible to look upon. It is a man. It has life. It has feelings just as you and I. Can it speak? Not yet. It must learn to speak. Just we had to learn. What are you going to do, Victor? I, I was prepared for the success of this experiment. So there is a room all in readiness for my creation. Unlock the door of that room, Julio. I am afraid that to destroy this creature. Come, come, Julio. You help me to create this man. It is not a man. It is a monster. Uh... It is moving. It is struggling into a sitting position. Have you unlocked the door of the room, Julio? I have, my master. Then help me. We will move the creature into its abode. We will lock it in there. It will be your charge until tomorrow, Julio. Remain here in the laboratory. Remain just outside the door. Do not enter the room yourself, and do not let anyone else enter. I will obey. Oh, this is my creation. A man which I made with my own hands. The creature seems to be able to focus its eyes now. It is looking straight at me. Oh, it looks awful. Uh, I shall train it myself. Come, take the other arm, Ernst. Let us fix it to walk across the room. No, no, I cannot touch it. There is much I would do for you, Victor, but I cannot touch that monster. I feel that I am going mad. There is no need to be afraid. The creature is helpless. It can barely walk. You help me, Julio. Take the other arm. No, do not make me touch it. Do as I say. Look, I have taken one arm. Now, help it off the bench. <laughs> Take it across the room. Carefully. It can barely drag one leg after the other. I have never seen anything so horrible. I admit I am disappointed in the appearance of my creation. It seems that in gaining life, the skin has become stretched tight and the features have coarsened. Still, the creature has life, and that is the main thing. Now we will place it in this room. Careful, Julio. Now, help me. Help me get it on the bed. The bed is not big enough. The creature seems to have become taller and bigger. That is the extraordinary thing. Probably caused by the electricity. Uh, uh, uh. Leave it on the bed. Now come outside. I'll lock the door. You take the key and keep it, you ah, I am glad the door is locked. I feel safer now. I feel a strange and almost overpowering sense of triumph. In my wildest dream, I had not hoped for success. And I... Uh, oh, oh. No. He has fainted. No, no. I felt strangely weak. Help me to get out of here. Let me go to my room. Baron Frankenstein, your story seems extraordinary. What became of the dreadful monster which you created? I felt weak and ill that night. And Elizabeth and Ernst helped me to my room. There I fell into a deep and troubled slumber. I awakened in the morning to find both Ernst and Elizabeth standing by the side of my bed. As soon as I saw them... Ernst? Elizabeth, why? What are you doing here? We were worried about you. Oh, I remember now. My great experiment was a success. I must go to the laboratory at once. Victor, I beg you to destroy that creature. Just as you gave it life. So you can take that life away. I know that you will never be happy while the creature lives. And I know that I can never be happy. For the sake of the love you bear me. For the sake of the happiness which we desire. I beg you to destroy the creature. Elizabeth is right, Victor. Your experiment was not altogether a success. You hope to make something beautiful. And the result has been... A hideous monster, a monster which you cannot unleash upon the world, or it will be forever upon your conscience. Perhaps you are right. I know we are right. Please, Victor, if you love me, you will do what I ask. Well, I will dress at once, 
And then I will go over to the laboratory and make arrangements to do away with the monster. You shall come with me. I will not go. I will go with you, Victor. Good. Then if you wait for me downstairs, I will join you. It seems that you regretted your somewhat rash experiment, Baron Frankenstein. I did, Captain Walton. And I feel happier when I had made up my mind to destroy my creation. I dressed hastily and went downstairs where I found Ernst waiting for me. We walked across to the laboratory and entered the room, and then I called Julio. Julio! Julio! It is strange that he does not answer. I ordered him not to leave here. Look, the door of the room where you put the creature. There is no door there. It is wrenched off its hinges. What could have happened? Look, there in the corner. What is it? Let me see. Why, it is the broken body of Julio. The broken body of... Of Julio? Yes, look for yourself. Oh, this is horrible. Let me look in that room. Is there, is there anyone there? My, the room is empty. I am too late. The monster has escaped, and in so doing, he has murdered my servant. I have unleashed a horror upon the world. I can speak no more of the matter at present, Captain Morgan. The memory of that horror is still too vivid. I beg of you, let me rest now. I will let you rest, Baron Frankenstein. I feel that I have not the right to sleep. I should not rest. But I must regain my strength. Try and sleep now. I will send the ship's surgeon to you. And tomorrow I will come and speak with you again. present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Victor Frankenstein is relating his tragic story to Captain Walton of the good ship Voyager. The vessel is icebound somewhere near the North Pole. Frankenstein is taking shelter there. He told the captain of the creation of the monster and of events leading up to the monster's escape and the murder of Julio. You look much better this morning, Baron Frankenstein. I trust you had a good night's sleep. I feel better, thank you, Captain. Tell me, what happened after you discovered the body of your servant, Julio? I recall it quite clearly. My friend Ernst Claval and myself were in the laboratory. We found that the door of the monster's room had been burst open, and there was the broken body of Julio lying upon the floor. We bent over the body and then... Do you realize, Victor, that you have unleashed a monster upon the world, a killer... Anybody's life may be in danger. We must make a search immediately. I will organize a search party. All the peasants on the estate can join in the search. I now realize the enormity of my crime. I will aid you. But I do not know what Elizabeth will say when she learns of this. What are the authorities going to say? How am I going to explain the broken body of Julio? You will have to tell the truth to the police. But they will not believe me. They think... I am mad. Oh, you were well mad to attempt this experiment. I am only sorry that it has succeeded. Elizabeth will be appalled when she hears this news. I will search for the monster, I promise you. But I do not think there is anything further to fear, Ernst. The monster will perish. I wish that this were only a dream, some horrible nightmare, and I could awaken to find it was not true. God, Julio's body proves the truth of what has happened. I know. But somehow my fear has vanished. I am going to seek my own happiness now. Oh, how can you talk like that when the monster is at large? The monster will be found. If not, he will perish. 
Let us go to the police. Tell me, did the police succeed in finding the monster, Baron Frankenstein? They did not. The search went on for days, and still there was no trace of the monster. But my hopes were high. I felt sure that the creature had wandered away somewhere in the hills, and there perished from cold and starvation. There came a day when I had almost forgotten the monster, and my experiments, they seemed like some dim dream of the past. I sought out Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I feel sure that we will have no further fear of the strange creature for which I was responsible. I am asking you now, will you marry me and come away to England? Let us take a long journey together. But Victor, does your conscience allow you to leave here? Are you sure that nothing further will be heard of this horrible creature? Oh, it is some months since the monster disappeared and nothing has been heard of it. It is safe for me to go now, Elizabeth. How long shall we be away? For at least six months. Then we shall return here and settle down in my home. Oh, please say that you will marry me as soon as possible, Elizabeth. There is only one request I have to make of you, Victor. What is it? My sister's child, William, needs a home. His mother is very ill. His father is dead. Can he come and live with us? Well, of course. I am very fond of William. We shall adopt him. And he shall be as our own child. Oh, you are very kind, Victor. Oh, I'm just a man in love with a beautiful woman. Now, let us go and tell your father. We will be married very soon, and we shall make all arrangements for our journey. Well, Baron Frankenstein, I trust you are not too tired to continue with the story? No, I am just marshalling the facts recalling my happy marriage. Those glorious few months in England, and then my return home. How long did you remain in England? For eight months. We had a delightful holiday there, and I returned to my ancestral home, and my wife and I settled down. During our absence, we had left the child William in charge of a nurse, whom we called Justine. She was an old friend of the family. She had known my wife for years. A few days after our return, Justine approached my wife. And I... Master William desires that I shall take him out for a walk. Do you think the weather is clear enough, Baroness? Oh, I think the child could go for a walk. What do you think, Victor? By all means, the sun is shining brightly now, although there are clouds on the horizon. Clouds on the horizon? Thick black clouds. I fear there may be a storm. Oh, just such a storm as one... Please, Victor, we agreed never to talk of that. Well, may I take the child for a walk? Yes. Just a short walk down to the lake, Justine. Tell me, Justine, do you like the child? Do you think that young Master William shows promise? He is rather a baby child, with a very strong will of his own. But I am fairly strict with him. Oh, you must not be too strict with him. Remember, we were all young ones. I will remember that, Baroness. All right. Take him out now. But do not take him any further down the lake. If there are any signs of an approaching storm, bring William home at once. I will, madame. Tell me, Elizabeth, what do you think of Justine? Oh, I have known her for years, my dear. But you do not seem to like her. She is rather a grim and forbidding woman. Oh, in reality, she has a very kind heart. Come over here, Elizabeth. Look out of the window. What is the matter? Look at those strange black clouds on the far horizon. They fill me with a sense of grim foreboding. Victor! Clouds gathered like dot on the day that I created the monster. Victor, do not think about it. The monster is dead. It is twelve months since he disappeared. But is he dead? The body has never been found. Darling... Do you not think we would have heard if the monster had still been alive? I suppose so. Did you hear that? Thunder in the distance. Oh, I hope Justine has the intelligence to bring William home before the storm shows signs of breaking. Why am I seized by this nameless fear? That thunder frightened me. Darling, do not think of the past. Let us talk of something else. We know that your friend Ernst is due tomorrow. 
We hope he stays with us for some weeks. I will be glad to see Ernst again, but in a way he will remind me of the horrors of the past. Oh, you must do your best to forget. You must try and forget that the monster ever exists. I must tell myself that. I created the monster, and now that monster is dead. I will never see it again. Victor, what can I hear? That dreadful sound. Strange, dragging footsteps. The footsteps are approaching this door. Oh, Victor, I am frightened. What can it mean? Look, Elizabeth. The door is opening slowly. So slowly. Frankenstein, my master. We meet again. The monster. This cannot be. I told myself that the monster no longer exists. It is many months since we have met my master. And now, all that you desire. I can walk. I can move freely. I can think. And I can speak. Where... Where have you been? Living in the woods these many months. Watching other folk. Learning to speak as they speak. And almost dying from intolerable loneliness. I come to make terms with you, my master. Terms? What mean you by that? Victor, he looks too horrible. That awful face. Those long, shambling legs. Only it is not true. Calm yourself, please, Elizabeth. I am an object of hatred and scorn and derision wherever I go. You did this, Frankenstein. You gave me life, but a life which is filled with misery. All men, all women turn from me. Why did you give me life so that I may suffer? If I had a gun, I would put an end to the life which I gave you. I would destroy you. I do not wish to die. I wish to live. I wish to be happy as other men are. Why? What do you ask of me? You made me. You gave life to me. Now make a mate for me. A woman who may share my life with me. What you ask is impossible. It shall be my mission in life to destroy you. Did you not kill my servant? That matters not. We will talk of this again. I have come to make a bargain with you. Give me a companion, someone to share my loneliness. Why should I not know happiness as others know it? Victor, you must not grant his request. Fear not, Elizabeth. I will never grant it. So be it, Frankenstein. You and yours shall suffer for this. What mean you by that? I killed one man and I can kill others. And unless you heed my demand, unless you fashion for me a mate, then you and all your family will suffer. I will kill them just as I killed that man. I will kill all who stand in my path. I will leave a trail of death and destruction wherever I go. But I will not kill you. You shall live on until I bend you to my will. The creature shall rule the master. Oh, monster. I shall kill you now. That puny mannequin. Victor, be careful. He is not dead. He laid his hands on me, and I hurled him away. Rise to your feet, Frankenstein. I am powerless to destroy the thing which I created. You are powerless. We shall meet again. You have refused my demand, but you shall hear from me. Farewell. Victor, do not go after him. He will kill you. Elizabeth, what can I do? You heard his threat. Let us gather the villagers together so that by uniting we may destroy him. One man cannot prevail against him, but many will succeed in killing him. You are right, Elizabeth. 
I swear that the monster of my creation shall die tonight. Did you succeed in finding the monster that night, Baron Frankenstein? Ask me no more now, Captain Walton. I am tired. I must not overtax my strength. Let me rest now. You will rest now, and I will write the notes of your story in my journal. So be it. Come to me tomorrow, and I will tell you of the horrors which befell me. present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein is taking shelter in the good ship Voyager, where he is the guest of Captain Walton. While the Voyager was icebound, Frankenstein told the captain some of his tragic story. He told of the creation of the monster, of its escape and return. I trust that you had a refreshing sleep, Baron Frankenstein. You certainly look much better this morning. Thank you, Captain. I slept very well, and I feel that my strength is gradually returning. I am glad to hear that. Do you feel inclined to tell me some more of your story? Well, I remember telling you how the monster had returned. He had learned to speak, and he begged me to make him a mate. Yes. One cannot help feeling a little sorry for him. I know what it is to be bitterly lonely. I also know. But the monster rushed out of the house when I refused. My wife and I discussed the matter. I sent for the burgomaster and begged that his officers would look for the monster. Some little time later, the storm burst in all its fury. The rain came down in torrents. And the thunder roared. My wife approached me anxiously. Victor, do you know that Justine has not brought little William home yet? I had almost forgotten about them, Elizabeth. Are you sure they have not come home? I have searched the house. We have asked the other servants, and there have been no sign of them. Dear, this is most disturbing. You instructed the woman to come home before the storm burst. They have been out for a long time. Do you think we should go and look for them? Well, they only went to the edge of the lake. They cannot be far away. I am worried, Victor. You know the monster is loose out there. Suppose that he were to attack William or Justine. Oh, there is no fear of that. Undoubtedly, Justine and William are taking shelter somewhere. I hope that you are right. But Justine, you have returned. Where is William? How can I tell you? Big girl. Where is William? I took him to the lake. I was playing with him there. He ran away from me. He went into the woods. I took a long time to find him, but I failed. I called his name time and time again, but there was no reply. Storm burst. I became panic stricken. I have been out in the rain searching for him. I fear that he may have fallen into the lake. Victor, you must go at once. Find the burgomaster and his men. Tell them to forget about the monster. They must find William. I will go now. Have hope and courage, Elizabeth. I am sure that I will find William somewhere. Madam, how can I ask your forgiveness? I swear that I meant no harm to come to the sky. You should have stayed with him, Justine. If any harm has come to me, I will never forgive myself. Well, go and change your clothes. You are very full. And then come down here. We will wait patiently for Baron Frankenstein to return. Ah, Victor, you have not gone yet. I am taking some of the servants with me. I have left word uh, here that if the Volgamaster and his men return, they are to look for William. Wait for me, Elizabeth. I will return as soon as possible. Well, Baron Frankenstein, did you succeed in finding the child? Well, for two hours I searched, taking my faithful servants with me. We wandered through the woods, calling the child's name, but there was no reply. At last, somewhat dispirited, I returned home to find my wife and Justine waiting for me. As soon as I entered. Victor, is there any news? 
Did you see any sign of him? Not a sign. He must have fallen into the lake. And it was my fault. Victor, I am distracted. What can have become of William? I do not know, my dear. Did the burgomaster return? He has not been back yet. The storm is abating. Yeah, it is passing. We will continue our search all through the night. Yes. I hear men voices. So the burgomaster is returning. Bring him in here, Justine. As you command, Baron Frankenstein. Oh, I blame myself for this in a way. Victor, we should never have allowed Justine to take William out today. She should have taken better care of him. She should never have allowed him to stay out of her sight. What is that? A woman screamed. Victor, what can it mean? Burgomaster, what has happened? Who screamed? I am calling to tell you, Baron Frankenstein. That a tragedy has occurred. Oh. My men have found the body of the child, William. William? He's dead? Yeah. The girl just seen saw his body when we were carrying it in. My men are all the girls. Elizabeth, I do not know what to say to you. Burgomaster, tell us what has happened. I only know that we were searching for this monster of whom Baron Frankenstein spoke. During the course of our search, we looked through some rushes on the edge of the lake. And there... We found the body of the boy, William. Oh. He was lying face downward in shallow water, and he was dead oh. when we found him. Did you send for a doctor? Yeah, oh, we did. But the doctor could not have helped in this case, Baron Frankenstein. Do you think the boy tripped and fell into the water? I think that he was pushed into oh. the water. Oh. And I think Justine was responsible for the crime. Oh, no. You must not say that. You have been away, both of you. But it is common talk here that Justine disliked the boy. She was always scolding him. And she told people that he was a difficult child. And we think that in a fit of rage, she pushed him into the water. Oh, I do not think that is possible. Well, let us have the girl in here and question her now. But my wife is grief-stricken. She need not remain here. Let me go and look about the body of William. I will send Justin to you. Very well, my dear. But do not distress yourself. Please go to your room and rest. I feel that I shall never be able to rest peacefully again. I will wait here with the burgomaster. Tell them to bring Justine in here. Very well, my dear. I know this is most distressing for you, Baron Frankenstein. But I have my duty to do. And if my suspicions are correct, then Justine will be arrested. Tell me this. Did you see any sign of the monster? Any huge footprints? Nine, we did not. The rain was coming down in torrents. No footprints would be left. Oh, bring your steam in here. Why have these men seized me? I have committed no crime. Hear me, girl. Is it not true that you were always scolding the child? He was a favored child. And as he was in my charge, I had to correct his fault. You are a woman of unbridled temper. And at times you have been known to strike the child. Why, this is news to me, Borgomaster. She has been seen to strike the child. That is not true. That is true. Will you admit that at times you have struck him? Yes, I have struck him. But merely because we deserved it. You had no right to do that. Hear me, Justin. Is it not true that in a fit of rage you pushed the child into the lake? That is untrue. I swear I did not push him into the lake. He ran away from me. He went into the woods, and I could not find him. You must believe me. Uh, we do not believe you. Baron Frankenstein, you know I would not kill the child. Address your remarks to me, Justine. Is it not true that in a fit of rage, you pushed the child into the lake, and then you were afraid of your mad act? You wandered around in the rain for hours and pretended you were looking for him. It is not true. Did you quarrel with him today? I was angry with him for running away from me. And I said I would slap him if I caught him. You terrified the child. I did not kill him. I am going to arrest you and charge you with the murder. You will stand your trial in due time. Down, Frankenstein, I appeal to you. I swear that the child came to no harm at my hands. I have served your family faithfully and well these many years. I did not murder William. You cannot believe it of me. I beg that you do not allow him to arrest me. Burgomaster, I think you are being rather hasty. I cannot believe that Justine pushed the child into the lake. It is my duty to arrest criminals. 
And I suspect her of having committed the murder. You are a stupid man. There is no proof that I did it. Uh, we will find proof. What has happened? Oh, Elizabeth, you have returned. I felt I wanted to know what was happening here. And I thought that you should go and look on the body of William. Justine has been arrested. The burgomaster thinks that she killed William. Sorry, save me. Do not let them arrest me. I did not kill the child. You believe me. You must believe me. Burgomaster, why do you say that Justine killed the child? Who else would have done it? Wait here. I wish to go and look on the body of the child. Do not take Justine away until I speak with you again. Very well. We will wait for you, Baron Feynman. I will return in a few minutes. Now, Justine, it will be better for you if you tell the truth. If you confess, then there may be a chance of saving your life. But if you persist in your denial and the court finds you guilty, then you will surely die. But I am not guilty. And I know the Baroness does not believe that I am guilty. Perhaps the Baroness is not aware that at times you struck the child. Is that true, Justine? I had to correct his fault. Never at any time did I strike him hard. Oh, you had no right to strike me. I go to my knees before you, Baroness. I swear I am innocent of this charge. Please help me. Enough of that, Justine. You shall receive a fair trial. But I am convinced that you are guilty. Hey, Uncle Master. This girl is not to be taken from the house. What ails you, Baron Frankenstein? She did not murder the child. What? How do you know? Did you not observe the marks upon the child's throat? He was strangled. The marks were the same as those upon the throat of my poor servant, Julio. I am in reality the murderer of that child. The murderer. Baron Frankenstein, what tragedy you have faced. Well, even now, when I think of it, I feel that I loathe that devil. But I cannot die yet. Will you tell me the more of the story? Not now. Let me just rest for a while. Come to me later, and you shall hear further details of my tragic life. present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein passed away the tedious days on the good ship Voyager by relating his tragic experiences to Captain Walton. The Voyager was icebound somewhere near the North Pole, and day after day a howling blizzard raged. Captain Walton became worried and the ice pack grew higher. He confided his worry to Baron Frankenstein. You look rather worried today, Captain Walton. Unfortunately, the weather shows no signs of abating, Baron Frankenstein. Have any of your men seen any trace of the monster? Has he attempted to visit the ship again? No one has seen any trace of it. Let us hope it has perished out there in the prison. I hope so, but I very much doubt it. Do you feel inclined to tell me some more of your story? Well, I have told you how the child William was murdered, and on examining the body, I formed the conclusion that the murder had been committed by the monster. 
I dash back into the room where my wife and the burgomaster were waiting with Justine, and I told them that I was in reality responsible for the murder of William. They looked at me in some amazement. Victor, what are you saying? It is true, Elizabeth. The monster killed William, and I created the monster. He has done this for revenge because I refuse to grant his request. Do you not agree with me that Justine was guilty of the murder? I swear that I am not guilty. You can release Justine. She is innocent. Burgermaster, did I not set you and your men to search for the monster? The monster which you say you created. Ah, I like the story, Baron Frankenstein. Understand, Burgermaster, that people do not doubt my word. I say that Justine is not guilty of this murder. Take your men. Go and search for this monster. Then you will find the murderer. Had you examined the body closely, you would have seen the marks on the throat. I am sorry if I have given you a fence, Baron Frankenstein. I was merely trying to do my duty. I appreciate that. Will you go now? Seek until you find this monster. Have no mercy. Shoot him on sight. We will do that. But of a truth, I have never seen the creature. Is it true that he is your creation? That you made him in a laboratory at the back of this house? It is true. Now go and do not question me further. Find him and kill him. Come, you men. There is much work to be done tonight. We will take our leave, Baron Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein, I go to my knees and thank you for saving my life. I thank you for making them release me. All right, Justine. Now go. Yes, I wish to speak to the Baron, and I do not wish to be disturbed. I will go, and believe me, I will sincerely mourn the child. What have you to say to me, Elizabeth? You are a murderer, Victor. You were right when you said you were responsible for William's death. It was through your own obstinacy, your headstrong stubbornness, that the monster was brought into being. And tonight, pleaded with you, we begged you not to proceed with this experiment. But you turned a deaf ear to our pleas. And as a result, Julio and William have been murdered. The murder is yours. And it will forever be upon your conscience. Oh, Elizabeth, please do not turn against me. Had you heeded me, had you really loved me, you would not have proceeded with your experiment. You would have married me and destroyed the form which you had made. But you were selfish. You wished to win fame. And what is the result? Oh, I think I hate you, Victor. Oh, Elizabeth. You do not mean that. That child's body lies in this house, mutely crying for revenge. And yet you stand here and try to justify yourself. What can I say to you, Elizabeth? Are you going to let that monster live? Are you going to let it roam the countryside, leaving a trail of death and misery? Why are you not out searching for it? Why do you not destroy this evil thing? Very well, Elizabeth. I admit that I cannot justify myself. I will go now, and I shall not return until I have slain the monster. No, Victor. I do not mean what I said. If you go out there, the monster may kill you. You have shown me my duty very plainly, Elizabeth. I will go, and I trust that I will return. You must not go, Victor. The shock and the grief caused me to speak like that. I do not hate you. I love you, and I want you to stay here. It is because of my love for you I want to repair the great sin which I have committed. You cannot go. Remember, Ernest Corval is coming tomorrow. Tell him what has happened, and do not fear for me. Goodbye, did you succeed in finding the monster, Baron Frankenstein? Well, I wandered out into the night. I walked through the woods. I traveled for miles until I was footsore and weary. But still I saw no trace of the being which I had created. And then, just as dawn was breaking, I came to a little clearing at the side of the woods. I 
looked around curiously. And then, eventually, I heard a woman sobbing. I hurried in the direction of the sound. And as I came through the woods, I saw a peasant's cottage. Outside the cottage, a woman was kneeling beside the body of a man. She was weeping bitterly. I approached her. Why, what is the matter? Can I do anything to help you? Who are you? Where have you come from? My name is Baron Frankenstein. Uh, what is the matter with this man? Oh, he is dead. He has been murdered. Let me see. Oh, the same marks on the throat. This man was my husband. We lived here happily together for many years. And one day a strange creature came into the woods. He seemed to be half man, half beast. Always crying through our windows. Following my husband, then he went to his work in the woods. Today, my husband took his gun. He shot at the creature and the bullet struck him. But it had no effect. The creature advanced. He seized my husband by the sword. I was powerless to interfere. And in a few minutes, Gustav was dead. And then the creature ran into the woods saying that all men were his enemies. Leaving a trail of death. And me, sir. Oh, will you help me, sir? What can I do? I am so afraid. We will take your husband's body into the house. I will return to town and you shall come with me. It is not safe for you here. Now, what is this strange creature? Where did he come from? He terrifies me. You will help me to carry your husband's body down gently now. Bring it in here. Come on, this way. We shall lay it on the couch. What can I do? Oh, Gustav, Gustav, my husband. Take comfort. Although there is little I can say. Oh, uh, listen. The monster approaches. Oh, they are not safe. They shall be killed. Greetings, Frankenstein. I thought that you would follow me. I have followed you so that I may kill you. This time I have a gun. You cannot kill me. We shall see. I am wounded, Frankenstein, but I will not die. You are the second man who has tried to kill me today. The second man who has wounded me, who has taught me the meaning of physical pain. Let this woman be gone. We have much to say to each other. Have you go? This creature is a devil. He cannot die. Poor woman. Why did you kill her husband? Because he was my enemy. All men are my enemies. And I take that gun from you, Frankenstein. You devil. You are so strong. Now we can talk. This woman will not return. She will run to the town for aid. I am the most wretched being on this earth. You are my creator, Frankenstein, and yet you despise and spurn me. You gave me life, a life that is filled with misery and wretchedness. You gave me this hideous form which turns all men against me. Do you expect me to love all men? Why did you kill the child? Why did you kill this poor peasant? Because he strove to kill me. Have I not the right to defend myself? Why do men strive to kill me? Why do they shudder when I appear? Is that not your fault, Frankenstein? Have I not suffered enough? Do you not think I have been punished? Everywhere I go, I seek bliss and happiness. But I am excluded because I am a hideous monster. Misery made me a fiend, but it is in your power to make me happy. Then there will be no further death, no further misery. When first you brought me to life, I was a poor, helpless, miserable wretch. I knew and could distinguish nothing, but I could feel pain, and I spent my days in weeping and misery. 
I will remember one day when I was oppressed with the cold. I was wandering in the woods. I found a fire which had been left by some beggars. I was overcome with delight at the warmth I experienced. I thrust my hand into the embers. I quickly drew it out again with a cry of pain. Thus did I learn the meaning of physical pain. But I have had greater suffering than that Frankenstein. Wandering in loneliness. And yet, you could give me happiness. I watched this couple whom you call peasants. They were happy. They loved each other. A love which I could never know. I wished to be friendly with them, but they fled from me. Viewed me with hatred and loathing. The man strove to kill me. Then he died. Tell me, foul monster, why did you slay the child, William? Because he meant something to you. Because I wanted you to suffer as I have suffered. And I swear this, Frankenstein, if you do not give me a mate, then you shall have no mate. I shall slay your wife. You dare to threaten to kill my wife? I swear that unless you start work very soon, unless you commence to create another creature, then your wife shall die. What happened, Baron Frankenstein? Did you agree to the conditions imposed by the monster? Oh, I can tell you no more today, Captain Walton. The memory of those horrors is still too fresh upon my mind. Return later, and I will continue with my story. Contradicting you, Baron, but we do not know that. I think the monster must have perished in the blizzard. Uh, what part of my story did I reach yesterday? You were telling of your conversation with the monster. You met him after he had murdered the peasant, and he threatened to kill your wife unless you created a mate for him. Yes. I sat there in the little peasant cottage, and I was horrified at the monster's words. He gazed at me for some time, and then I'm... Foul monster, you seek to arouse my sympathy. Do you not know that you have turned my wife against me? Had I but heeded her advice, you would never have lived. I came to destroy you the day after your creation, but I was too late. You had escaped, and you had already taken a life. I will take no more lives if you will accede to my request. When I left your home, I wandered through the woods, and there I saw the child whom you called William. 
As soon as he saw me, he screamed and sought to run away. But I seized him by the arm and spoke softly to him, bidding him not to be afraid. He told me that his uncle was Baron Frankenstein and that I would be punished if I harmed him. At the mention of your name, I tremble with rage. And in a fit of black rage and despair, I kill the child. Just as I shall kill all of your family unless you create for me a mate. I cannot bring myself to do such a thing. You are hideous and horrible. Were I to create another like you, I might unleash another horror on the world. My companion must be as deformed and horrible as myself. One from whom everyone will shrink and who will turn to me for comfort. But I cannot do it. You must do it. Or I will work against you so that you shall curse the very day that you were born. So that you will curse those whose hands created me. I do curse them now. I seek to reason with you. You are my creator. Let me feel gratitude towards you. Let me see that I excite the sympathy of some existing being. Do not, I beg of you, deny me my reward. I have tried to paint for you a picture of misery, the horror, and the suffering which I have undergone. All I ask is a mate as hideous and repulsive as myself. Do I see compassion in your eyes? And if I consent, what then? If you consent, neither you nor every other human being shall ever see us again. I will take my mate and go to the vast and frozen wastes of the north. Your body is deformed. And your mind is deformed. I have learned that I cannot control the mind of any creature which I create. If I create a mate for you, she will also have the desire to kill, to inflict misery on others. Oh, I, I dare not do it. If you refuse, I swear that all you know and love shall die as others have died. I will haunt this earth, the enemy of mankind, who are my enemies. So be it. I must consent to your demand on your solemn oath that you will take your mate into exile so that none will ever see you again. Do you? Do you swear to that? I swear by the sun and by the blue sky of heaven and by the fire of the love that burns in my heart that if you grant my prayer you will never behold me again. Depart to your home and commence your labors. I shall watch your progress with anxiety. And mark this well. When you are ready, when your labors are complete, I shall appear. And if you fail me, you know the penalty. Farewell, Frankenstein. I trust that soon... We shall meet again, and that the meeting shall bring happiness. But, Baron Frankenstein, surely you did not accede to the monster's request, for well, after he had left the little cottage I sat, and I thought for a long time, I realized that he was a vile and horrible creature, and that he had demanded that I should create just such another creature. And my heart was heavy. With dragging footsteps, I returned home where I found my wife and my friend Ernst Claval awaiting me. As soon as I entered, Elizabeth. Oh, sister, I am so glad you have returned. I drove you away with harsh words last night, but I regretted my words. Tell me, what news? The monster still lived, Victor, my friend. I have heard of your trouble. Elizabeth has told me. 
Let me offer you all the aid that I can. Together we shall destroy this vile creature. Have no fear. The monster will do no more harm. There will be no other death. How can you know that? Well, I have spoken with him. And there shall be no more death. Rest assured of that, Elizabeth. Oh, I am so glad. But can you trust this monster? I have been greatly punished for my sins. Tell me this, Victor. Did you consent to the monster's, monster's request? Surely you did not promise to create a mate for him. Elizabeth, there is so much at stake. So much harm has been done. Victor, you cannot do it. Already there is one vile, bloodthirsty monster roaming here. Dare you create another? Oh, give me time to think, please. Oh, Elizabeth, he is upset. Leave him alone with me now, and I will talk with him. Oh, I am so sorry. Poor Victor has been out all night. He needs refreshment. Uh, I will see that a meal is prepared for you, Victor. Oh, I thank you, Elizabeth. Remain here with us, and we shall talk of the matter later. Victor, my poor friend, my heart is heavy for you. What can I do to help you? Oh, help me, Ernst. I must grant the monster's demand. I tried to kill him. My shot wounded him, but he did not die. And before I could fire again, he took the gun from me. Did you promise to create a mate for his side? I did, but my, my work shall not be done here. I will travel to some lonely island, and there I will have to study again for many months. And there I will create a mate for the monster, which I created. You must not do it, Victor. I must do it. Oh, having created one such hideous monstrosity as a sin, a sin for which you have paid heavily, do not create another. If I do not, your life is in danger. Elizabeth's life is in danger. I must do as the monster says. So be it. I shall accompany you, and I will help you with your work. Oh, you are kind, my friend. A friend of mine has a cottage on a little island in the office. I know that he will lend us this cottage, and you will be able to conduct your work there. But I am against it, Victor. I do not think you should do it. Uh, I must do it. I feel sure that if I grant his request, there will be no further trouble. But how can you be sure? You cannot control the minds of the creatures which you create. Oh, we shall tell Elizabeth, you are taking me away from my health, that I am going for a sea trip for several months. Then I will be able to return here to find happiness when my work is done. It seems the only way. The servants are preparing the meal for you, Victor. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. I have just been talking matters over with Ernst, and he thinks that I should go away with him for a secret. My health has been undermined by all this dreadful worry. And you are going away without me? No, but you will be safe here. I know that the monster will not harm you. I feel that I must go away without you this time, Elizabeth. Where are you going? We have not decided yet. But will you not trust him to my care, Elizabeth? I will, Ernst. But I want to ask you one question, Victor. Do you intend to grant the monster's demand? My dear, I am going away from here soon, but I will not grant the monster's demand. My laboratory and all my instruments are here. I am leaving them. I am striving to forget about the monster. You need have no fear. I know that the monster will do no further harm. What did you say to him? Well, I do not like to think of it. But I spoke with him, and he swears that he will not commit another murder. Is he not to be punished for the murder he has already committed? Oh, there is nothing we can do at present, my dear. If the burgomaster's men find the monster, they will kill him. Believe me, Elizabeth, Victor is asking for the best. Be content to leave him in my charge. I must be content. Sir, you have nothing to fear, Elizabeth. Now wait here until I return. I will recover my health. I will forget the miseries of the past. When I come back here, I swear that you and I shall never be parted again. And nothing shall ever happen to Mar. Did you eventually go to that island in the Orkney, Baron Frankenstein? I went to the island in the Orkney. I will tell you of my experiences if you come to me again a little later, Captain Walton. I wish to look through your journal now, and I may make several corrections. Very well, Baron Frankenstein. I will leave you alone now, but I will return later. Frankenstein. 
During his enforced stay on the good ship Voyager, Baron Frankenstein related his experiences to Captain Walton, who noted them in his journal. And it is owing to that journal that we are able to retell the strange experiences of Baron Victor Frankenstein. Each morning, Captain Walton used to visit Baron Frankenstein's cabin. Morning to you, uh, Captain Walton. Good morning, Baron Frankenstein. Did you look over the notes which I have made in my journal? I did. They form a very graphic and remarkable story. It is extraordinary to think I am reading my own story, and that story is not yet ended. Somewhere outside, the foul monster of my creation still wanders at large, waiting to wreak his evil vengeance on all who stand in his path. Did you create a mate for that monster? You may remember you were telling me that you and your friend Ernst Clerval had arranged to journey to a lonely island in the Orkneys, there to attempt to create a female monster. That is true. And I lied to my wife. I told her that I was going to take a short trip for my health. Eventually, I reached the island in the Orkneys, and there Ernst Clerval and I took up our residence in a large, comfortable cottage. I used one big room at the back to conduct my experiments. I studied night and day. I worked for months. And at last I molded a form which I hoped would someday have life and would be the mate of the monster which I had created. One night I sat working over this form while Ernst sat by my side. He watched me at work and said, Victor, I do not know whether you are doing the right thing. I do not feel that you should create another monster. I have doubts myself, my friend. As my work nears completion, I am afraid. I think that I will unleash another killer, another frightful monster to bring havoc and misery into the lives of many people. And yet I must go on. You do not know that the original monster you created still lives? He may have died by now. And if you continue with this work, you may have to destroy it. Sometimes I feel that the monster which I created will destroy me. Oh, you should not think of those things. Have you heard from Elizabeth lately? I received a letter from her yesterday. She begged me to return home and wonders why I am delaying so long. She must never know what I am doing. She will never forgive me. She will never learn. Come to bed now, Victor. You have worked long enough. You look tired and ill. Uh, I am tired and ill. But I cannot leave my work at pleasant. You go to bed and leave me here. The truth to tell, I am tired of this cold, windy, unpleasant island. Will we be here much longer? Not very much longer. If I work through the night, it will merely be a matter of waiting for a thunderstorm. That might come tomorrow, and then my work will be complete. Then this lifeless body will have the divine spark, and I will have sinned again. Oh, think of it, Ernst. I should not do it. I, I know I should not do it. Courage, my friend. It is not too late to destroy the body. Go, leave me. I must think. And I must work on and on, working for the monster which I created. You will be all right here? Yes, of course. Why not? Oh, very well, my friend. I will bid you good night. A hey, moment. Oh, what was that? Oh, the casement window blew open. The force of the wind must have blown it open. Strange. It has never done that before. I shall close it before I go. Ah, that is better. Good night, Ernst. I will see you in the morning. Good night, Victor. Do not stay up too long. Alone. It is the devil's work that I have made my own. My thoughts drive me to a frenzy. If only I had never attempted to create the monster. If only I did not have to slave now at the orders of my own creation. What's that? I said that I would be watching over you, Frankenstein. The monster. I have watched you these many days. I've traced you to this lonely island. And I am happy knowing that now you are obeying my orders. 
knowing that soon I am to have a companion, a mate in my own likeness. Oh, why do you haunt me? Why have you followed me here? Are you not my creator? Have I not the right to follow you and watch you at your work? Anger me not, Frankenstein. I am living for the day when that lifeless form that lies before me shall have life. Then there will be one creature on this earth which will not regard me with shuddering, hatred, and loathing. You look more hideous than ever. And when I think that I created you, I am filled with horror and remorse. I cannot make another in your likeness. Be gone, foul fiend. Have a care, Frankenstein. You remember the threat I made to you? Unless you complete your work, unless you make me a companion, all those whom you love shall die at my hands. Standing there, framed in the window, you look more loathsome than anything I have ever seen. Those hands which I made have killed defenseless people. And they shall kill other defenseless people if you do not obey my orders. Tell me this. Have you slain anyone since last we spoke? I slew but one man. He laughed and jeered at me, hurled stones at me, turned the villagers against me. Then I seized his throat and choked the life from his body. You devil, you promised you would slay no more men. Have you the right to command me? Am I not your creator? Did you not swear to me that if I carried out your orders, there would be no further murders? Sometimes the desire comes upon me to kill. I cannot resist that desire. But proceed with your work, Frankenstein. I like to watch you. Go from here. I will not proceed with my work while you are here. Go, you loathsome visage. Oh, you fill me with horror and hatred. Very well, my master. I will go. But I will not be far away, and I hope that soon your work will be complete. I bid you farewell. We shall meet again. Did the monster trouble you again that night, Baron Frankenstein? I did not see the monster again that night, but I sat in thought for many hours, realizing that my ghastly work was a great sin. Remembering the face of the monster as I had last seen it, wrinkled with ghastly malice and treachery. I was sitting there when dawn broke. My friend Saval came in and found me. As soon as he saw me, he said, Victor, have you been here all night? I haven't. Is your work complete? It is not complete. But I received a visit from the monster last night, and I know now that I cannot complete this work. I dare not make another fiend. I have not the right to do it. What did the monster say? Did he threaten you? Yes. Do you not understand, Ernst, that if I create this female, there is no knowing that she will accept the monster as her mate? She might turn with disgust from him when she sees him amongst other men. She will also know and realize that he is hideous and deformed, and she may have the same murderous purposes. I dare not do it. I must not do it. My poor friend, how can I advise you? Give me that iron bar. I feel that madness is upon me. I swear that I shall never complete this work. Give me that iron bar and stick it. Here it is. What will you do with it? You will see. I will destroy all traces of my work. Look. I smash this lifeless form to atoms. Never will I resume these labors. As I smash this form, so do I defy the monster. I will find him. I will no longer fear his threat. I will destroy him just as I am destroying this work of mine. Look on me, Ernst. Victor, you are close to madness. Yes, close to madness. See. See now what I have done. The monster shall never have a mate. Perhaps you are wise. I know that I am wise, but I know that my first creation still lives, and when he learns of this, he will vow hatred and revenge. <laughs> the monster! Oh, he approaches the window now. I still have the iron bar. I shall destroy him as I destroy the form that was to be his mate. Oh, 
The loathsome creature stands outside the window. Look at him. Yes, look on me, Frankenstein. Look on your creation and look on the work you have destroyed. And I am glad that I destroyed it. Do you dare to break your promise? I left Switzerland after you. I crept along the shores of the Rhine. I have dwelt many months in the heat of England and among the deserts of Scotland. I have endured unutterable fatigue, cold and hunger, and now you dare to destroy my hopes. Your threats cannot move me. They confirm in me the determination not to create a companion for you. Do you think that I, in cold blood, would set loose upon the earth another monster whose delight is in death and wretchedness? I will kill you. Careful, Victor. I do not fear him. I seize the iron bar from his ground. Stand back, Frankenstein. Do you think you are to be happy while I grovel in the intensity of my wretchedness? I go now, Frankenstein. But we will meet again on the day that you are reunited with your wife. Remember that, Frankenstein. On the day that you are reunited with your wife, you and I will come face to face again. Ernst, will you not help me to kill them? I have beat me a helpless. He stands outside the window. He wrenched that iron bar from your grasp and bent it as if it were a stick of willow. He, he has gone now. I am afraid. And you may well be afraid, Frankenstein. You have had your chance, and you let it slip by. Fear me, my creator. I am now your master. Come <laughs> away, Victor. Come away. We must leave this island at once. Did the dreadful monster carry out his threat, Baron Frankenstein? Ask me no more today, Captain. I recall that I almost swooned after the monster had left me. And I feel now that the monster is not far away. He is close to this ship. I seem to sense his presence. I shall place our men on guard outside your cabin. Do not fear, Baron Frankenstein. If my men set eyes on the monster, they will kill him. I go to give those orders now. present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Aboard the good ship Voyager, Baron Frankenstein is confined to his cabin, recovering from the effects of hardship and exposure. During his convalescence, he tells the story of his tragic experiences to Captain Walton, the master of the vessel. Well, the weather seems to be improving a little, Baron Frankenstein. For a wonder, it's not snowing. Perhaps the thaw is going to set in soon. Then you will have to take your vessel back to England, and you will leave me here. We shall certainly not leave you here. Oh, but you must. I cannot return to civilization until I am sure that the monster of my creation is dead. Let me plead with you, Baron Frankenstein. You were in the last stages of exhaustion when you came aboard this vessel. We have nursed you back to health and strength. Come back to England with us. Forget about the monster. I feel sure that he has perished out there in the blizzard. Oh, if only I could feel sure. Tell me some more of your story. What happened after you had destroyed the companion you were making for the monster? Did I not tell you that the monster returned and threatened me? He swore that he would see me again on the day that I returned to my wife? Yes, I remember that. And did you leave the island then? I arranged with my friend Ernst Claval that we should leave the island a few days later. And when the supply vessel called, some men were sent ashore to carry our effects to the ship. This vessel was under the command of a door Scottish captain called MacDougall. He came ashore and spoke with Ernst Claval and myself. 
We can put you ashore at Southampton. That is as far as we're going this trip. Oh, that will do nicely. Are you uh, agreeable to Dr. Straval? Oh, we must be agreeable. No other boat will come here for a month. Well, we must go on this one. Uh, tell me, Captain McDougall, is your vessel uh, watched closely? Uh, what do you mean by that, Baron Frankenstein? Has anyone else tried to get aboard the vessel? But certainly not. The vessel is moored about 100 yards from the shore, and only one boat came ashore. No one would get into that boat but you two passengers. Oh, oh I am glad to hear that. I did not know that there was anyone else on the island. There is one other person on the island, but he must not leave here. Uh, who is he? Uh, that matters not. But he is an enemy of mine. Uh, is everything already earned? Oh, my briefcase has been left in the cottage. I will only detain you for a moment, Captain. I will go and get it myself. Very well, Mr. Crival. We will wait for you. Uh, do not be too long, Ernst. I, I want to get off this island as soon as possible. Oh, I will only be a few minutes. Now, Captain McDougall, I would like you to give your crew instructions to see that no one, bar her, Crival, and myself, attempts to board this vessel. It is imperative that the monster should remain here. Perhaps he will die of starvation. What monster is this of which you speak, Baron Frankenstein? A huge, deformed creature. A murderer. A murderer? On this island? Do not worry your head, Captain. As long as that creature is not allowed to board your vessel, as long as we keep a watchful eye, there is nothing to fear. I am hopeful that I will never see or hear of him again. <laughs> What's that? Ernst, I've seen What does it mean? Call some of your men. Come quickly. Follow me. Tell me more, Baron Frankenstein. Had Ernst Reval really been attacked? Together with Captain McDougall, we hurried to the cottage. I flung open the door and dashed in. And then a dreadful sight met my eyes. On the floor in the far corner lay the huddled body of Ernst Claval. I dashed over to him and said, This is the monster's work. Oh, Ernst, my friend, I, I should have known. I should have known. Let me see the man. Look at him, Captain McDougall. He is dead. And look on those cruel bruises, those marks on his throat. This is the monster's work. He has carried out his promise. Those that I love are to be slain. This is my punishment. But who is this frightful creature? Let me order my men to touch for him. The island is small. We must find them. Yes, we must find him. Arm your men with firearms. Tell them to shoot on sight. But what does the creature look like? A cruel, evil monster. Much bigger than an ordinary man. With long, yellow fangs that show between his lips. The monster of hideous cruelty. Oh, he must be found and slain. But who is he? What is his name? He has no name. I created him. You created him? You created this monster, Baron Frankenstein? It is the truth. Go, man. Tell your men to search for this monster. Tell them to slay him. Leave me here with my friend Ernst. Will you be safe here? I will be safe, although I pray for death. Go, Captain. I beg that you strive to find the monster and slay him. I will gather my men at once. We'll search the island thoroughly. You had better return to the vessel as soon as possible, Baron Frankenstein. I will see you there. Oh, Ernst, my friend. The truest friend that man ever had. Had I but heeded your advice, you would have been alive today. But I sin. I usurped the right of God. And for that sin, I am paying dearly. Now I have lost my friend. I know that my wife is in danger. Oh, mighty Father in heaven, I know that I have sinned. I beg for thy forgiveness. I ask that I may live to avenge those who have died because of my crime. Hear thou my prayer, my Father. Well, Baron Frankenstein, was the monster found on the island? Captain McDougall and his men searched the island thoroughly, but there was no trace of the monster. He had not even left a footprint. Where he was hiding, I do not know, because later on I joined in the search, and I could not find him. At last, 
heartbroken and weary, I left the island, taking with me the body of my beloved friend, Ernst Laval. The vessel set sail, and in due time I landed at Southampton. Then I made arrangements to go home, and at last I arrived in Geneva once again. On arriving there, I found my wife eagerly awaiting me. She greeted me happily. Victor, oh, my heart is almost bursting with joy to see you again after all these months. Oh, my darling. Oh, Elizabeth, I am so happy to feel my arms about you once again. Let me look at you. Uh, Have you fully recovered from your illness? Have you forgotten the nightmares and the horrors of the past? I am well, Elizabeth. That is not the truth, Victor. You look drawn and very pale. I have had a long and tiring voyage, but I, I will be better soon. But what ails you? I'm very Ernst. Did he not come with you? Ernst, uh, it's not uh, returning. Not returning? I left him in England. Uh, uh, he sent you with his love. That is strange. I thought he would come back to you. Oh, do not question me now, Elizabeth. I am tired. But tell me of yourself. Have you been happy here? Oh, how could I be happy while you were away from me? But I look forward to the day when you would return. Have you seen anything of the monster? Not a sign. I am living in hopes that he has perished, that we will never hear from him again. Have there been any reports that he has been around here in the last few days? Why should you think that? Have you seen anything of him during your travels? I saw him once. Did he follow you? Oh, do not be worried, Elizabeth. I had so hoped that the horrible creature was dead. Why are you looking so worried, Victor? What has happened? Well, you must be guided by me, Elizabeth. I beg that you will not leave the house unaccompanied. Uh, Stay by my side always. And whatever you do, wherever you go, if you do leave my side, carry this pistol with you. A a pistol? But, Victor, what is it that you fear? What is it that I fear? Don't you know? I fear... That the monster may return. I know that he is not dead. You know that he is not dead? I told you that I... I've seen him. But why should you think that he will attack me? Oh, please do not question me now, Elizabeth. But do as I say. Promise that you will not be alone for any length of time. And if you hear anything which frightens you, promise on your word of honor, that you will call for help at once. But do you think that that will be necessary? Oh, it is necessary. And please always carry that pistol with you. Do not hesitate to use it if necessary. This is most alarming. I wish you would be frank with me, Victor. Tell me why you think the monster will attack me. He is a blood-crazed inhuman creature. We must be on our guard. We must try to kill him before he does any further damage. Any further damage? Has he committed another murder since you left here? Oh, can we not talk of something else, Elizabeth? I am so worried, so terribly worried. The mere mention of the monster upsets me. And I thought that this holiday would help you to recover... And you would come back well and strong. But you seem worse than ever. I have never seen you show such fear. Well, I cannot help it. Oh, but be of good heart, Elizabeth. While I am here, I shall protect you. And if the monster comes, I swear he shall die. Why should you think the monster will come? Well, he threatened to come on the day that you and I were reunited. But I hope that he is on that lonely island in the autumn. I do not think he can be here. Victor, did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. The monster's laugh. 
She has returned. Who is it? I am a Proceed, Baron Frankenstein. Did you see anything of the monster that day? Oh, I'm afraid I I cannot tell you any more now, Captain. The telling of this story has tired me. Please go and leave me in peace. Very well. I will note what you have told me in the journal, and I will return to you when you feel more rest. Baron Frankenstein was gradually recovering his health under the care of the captain and the surgeon of the ship Voyager, which was icebound in northern waters. Each day, Baron Frankenstein told Captain Walton some of his story, and the captain duly noted these facts in his journal. Perhaps you would care to have another look through my journal, Baron Frankenstein. You may desire to make some further correction. If you will leave your journal here, I will go through it, Captain Walton. On looking through the porthole, I notice that the weather is improving. Yes, it is noticeably warmer, too. I think the thaw will set in at any day. Then at last we can proceed on our journey to England. I trust you will be accompanying us, Baron. I doubt it. Strange that neither you nor your crew have seen any sign of the monster. Let us trust that the monster no longer lives. I must make sure before I return. I think that very soon I will be able to go up on deck. I am feeling so much better. The surgeon says that within a few days you may be able to go up on deck. Now, would you care to tell me some more of your story? Well, let me see your journal. Ah, I was telling you how I returned home to my wife. I was afraid to tell her of the death of Ernst Claval, and I was terrified that the monster would keep his promise and appear on the day that I was reunited with Elizabeth. While we were talking, we suddenly heard a ghastly laugh, and I knew that the monster had kept his promise. Elizabeth clung to me in terror, and I said, now, Elizabeth, you understand why I must guard you carefully. The monster has returned, and he has designs on your life. But I thought that he had promised never to take another human life. He did not keep his promise, nor did I keep mine. Oh, he is outside that door, Victor. What can we do? Oh, I will lock the door. We are safe in here. I am terrified. I have kept my promise, Frankenstein. You broke yours to me. It seems that my creator can make a promise and break it. But I do not break promises. Have you sincerely mourned the death of your friend, Ernst Clavel? Ernst Clavel? Is he dead? I will explain later, Elizabeth. I am going now, Frankenstein. But I will not be very far away. Uh, not very well. Victor, what can we do? I will arrange for a bodyguard to come to the house. We will make plans to slay that foul monster. Tell me about Ernst Cavall. Well, uh, I was trying to keep the news from you. Ernst has been killed, murdered by the monster. Oh, Elizabeth, are we to spend the rest of our days in fear and terror? Am I never to cease to suffer because of the crime which I committed? I will carry this pistol, Victor, and we will take every precaution to try and protect ourselves. Oh, the monster will not kill me. He desires me to live on and suffer. Oh, but I am afraid for you. Tomorrow, you shall leave here 
You will go to England. Think not that the monster would follow me. Oh, I am safer with you, Victor. We must not be parted again. Oh, it is my fault that we are suffering all this misery. We have each other. We must do all in our power to rid the world of this foul creature. I will send a message to the Burgomaster at once. I will ask him to send his best man here to act as a bodyguard, and together we shall plan to bring about the downfall of the monster. You must send one of the servants with a message at once. Oh, Elizabeth, until that monster dies, we are to spend our days in terror and abject misery. Let us pray that we shall escape with our lives. Well, Baron Frankenstein, did the Burgomaster send someone to protect you from the monster? A man called Fabian was sent to the house. He took up his quarters there, and he acted as our bodyguard. But I assure you, Captain Walton, that my wife and I experience misery, terror, and suspense such as is known to few mortal beings. Every footstep, every sound caused us to start. We were prisoners in our own home. Still, there was no sign of the monster. There came a day when I sent for the man, Fabian. I discussed with him the best plans for finding the vile creature which was endangering our existence. When Fabian came into the room, I said, Oh, uh, be seated, Fabian. Thank you. Tell me, uh, where is the baroness? She has gone to her room to rest. I saw that her door was locked, Baron Frankenstein. Do you think we need an extra bodyguard in the house? Well, it might be advisable to have another man here. Fortunately, we are all armed. The Baroness never goes anywhere without her pistols. And you and I carry two pistols. Do you think the monster is somewhere in the ground? I have had the ground searched each day, and still there is no sign of the monster. I do not know where he can be. Let us send a message to the Burgomaster and ask him to send another man here. We will do that at once. I feel that we will receive a visit from the monster at any time. And if there is an extra man here, we will have more chance of overpowering and killing the creature. I will give the message to the servant now. Wait. What ails you, Baron Frankenstein? Why, the door will not open. Let me see. Why? It is locked from the outside. Was the key on the outside of the door? It must have been, but I did not place it there. Well, who could have locked us in? Surely the monster is not here. We will have to break our way out of here. My wife, she is upstairs in her room. We must get out of here at once. <laughs> that is Elizabeth. Help me to break this door open. It is a heavy door. Out in the way. I was trying to be scared. The door is too heavy. Where are these servants? Why do they not come to help us? Help! How I open this door? Oh, Lord, Lord, I think I can break the handle with the corner of this small table. Stand clear, Baron. I must get out of here. My wife, I heard a scream and I heard a shot. Hurry, baby. A moment. Panel. It is not big enough to go through yet, break another panel. I am going the best I can. Oh, oh, let me go through. I will follow you. Oh. Look. There. At the foot of the stairs. The baroness. Oh. Elizabeth, what has happened? Oh. Look at the marks on her throat. The baroness. He's dead. Choked to death by the monster. He kept his promise. Oh, look. The pistol lies there by her side. She must have fired it to try to save herself. And we were too late. We were locked down in the library. I must go for help at once. Oh, we are helpless. No one can prevail against the brute which I created. He swore to kill my wife. And now he has kept his promise. Oh, and listen, listen. You are distressed in the telling of this story, Baron Frankenstein. Shall I leave you alone? I shudder now as I recall the horror of that moment. As the realization came to me that my beloved wife had been murdered, I felt as if I had murdered her myself. But I shall live to avenge her 
The monster must die. What is that? That I know so well. The monster is here on the ship. Are you armed, Captain? I am not. We meet again, Frankenstein. And I can lock this door behind me. Why have you come here? I hoped that you were dead, you vile, murdering creature. I have no sympathy for you, only hatred and loathing. Stand where you are, Captain. I hold you firmly. You tremble. Let me go. If you call for help, you shall die. Why should you kill me? I have done you no harm. You have said that your sympathies are all with Frankenstein. But do you not realize that I also have suffered? A quarrel is almost over, Frankenstein. I have come to tell you that I will slay no more of your friends unless they seek to slay me. I have but one life to claim now. Whose life is that? Yours, Frankenstein. The creature shall kill the creator. The monster shall destroy the man who created him. Mark that well, Frankenstein. Before this ship leaves, you shall die. I only pray that before this ship leaves, I am given the strength to kill you. I will be content to die when you are dead. Think not to escape me, Frankenstein. Your life and mine are bound together. I go now, but be prepared. The end may not be far distant. Go after him, Captain. Oh, quick. Bid your men shoot him down. No. No. I cannot go after him, Baron Frankenstein. I do not think that anyone can kill that monster. And he has sworn to kill all who strive to slay him. Oh, you must despise me and think me a coward. I do not think that. I understand. But go on deck, Captain. Tell your men to keep a close guard. And whatever you do, see that the officers are armed. And carry a firearm yourself. Then return to me and I... We'll continue my story. Baron Frankenstein was gradually recovering his health, and he was telling his story to his friend Captain Walton on the ship Voyager, which was icebound somewhere near the North Pole. On one occasion, just after Frankenstein had described the death of his wife, the monster appeared on the ship. He went to the cabin. And there he attacked Captain Walton. Frankenstein advised the captain to carry firearms in future and to let his crew do the same. The next day, Captain Walton again visited Frankenstein's cabin. Great well, Captain, what news? The ship is carefully guarded, Baron Frankenstein. We have seen no sign of the monster. He swore that he would return here to kill me. He cannot board this vessel now without being seen. I have placed men on guard all over the vessel. Oh, that monster is almost a devil. You do not know what he can do. I must apologize to you because of the abject fear which I showed yesterday. You need not apologize, Captain. All men show fear when they see the monster. I am his creator, and I am afraid. Did you say that the monster is impervious to bullets? I did not say that. He has certainly been wounded twice, but he has recovered. 
He is so strong. Well, if we have another visit from him, it shall be his last. I swear that we shall kill him. I hope so. Do you feel you are able to tell me what happened after the death of your beloved wife? Well, the bodyguard Fabian and myself found my wife's body at the foot of the stairs. I picked the body up tenderly and bore it to another room while Fabian bent for assistance. I looked at the still form of my wife. Then I knelt down and prayed. I prayed that I be granted life so that I may destroy the monster which I created. Has not my punishment been enough? Have not others suffered because of my sin? When will my suffering cease? Oh, Elizabeth, my beloved wife, I will live to avenge you and to avenge those who have died because of my evil work. I kept my promise, Frankenstein. What? You here? You cannot move. The creature is stronger than the creator. I hold you fast. Oh, so great is my hatred that it gives me strength. I shall free myself. I shall kill you. Hear me, little man. I despise you. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Hear me. Did you not condemn me to a life without a mate, without a companion? Did you not create me and make me an object of hatred and contempt? Now all men are against you. They know that you created me. They know that you have brought misery to others. Therefore, you will become an object of hatred and contempt. You are now without a wife. I killed her. That is her still body lying on the bed. Suffer now as I have suffered, Frankenstein. Oh, if only I had the strength to kill you. You have not the strength. In your foolishness, you have made your creature stronger than yourself. My work is done now. I am leaving here. I cannot make you suffer more. I know that every man's hand will be against you, and you will be an outcast just as I am. Where, where are you going? Who knows? I shall wander the world. Mayhap I will find someone as hideous as myself. Someone who will be a companion to me. Wherever you go, I shall follow you. If it be to the ends of the earth, I will not be content to rest until I have destroyed you. Have a care that I do not destroy you. I could do it now. Feel you, my fingers about your throat. All right. Why do you not kill me? It would be a merciful release. But I should not die happily, knowing that you still live. You shall live on. You shall suffer as I have suffered. Mayhap we shall meet again. We shall meet again, I swear it. But tell me, have you the powers of evil? How is it that you were able to find us? How is it that you were able to get into the house? <laughs> I laughed as I watched you searching for me. You did not think that I could find shelter on the roof, that I could lower myself into the window of this room. Your wife slept. But she heard me as I came through the window. She started up and seized her pistol. She fired, but her aim was wild. She did not struggle much, Frankenstein. Then I took her body and hurled it down the stairs. You have been on the roof all the time? I have. Oh, Frankenstein, I have death with the books. Why? The monster, shoot him. You shall not kill me. Oh, he's not my homicide. Let him let me go now. He's choking me. Oh, let that man go. Do not kill him. He shall die. All my enemies shall die. Do not approach Frankenstein. With one hand I can slay this man. With the other I hold you at bay. Oh, do not kill that man. He shall die. Oh, he's dead. 
It is my pleasure to make men die. One man gave me life, but I have given death to many. Help! Help! The man struggled through weaker Frankenstein. You cannot aid him now. I hurl him aside. And thus another of my enemies has died. I hurl you aside. And I say farewell. Seek not to find me. My work here is done. Oh, come back. I must have further speech with you. I must find some way to make peace with you. You will have peace if you do not try to follow me. What happened, Baron Frankenstein? Did the monster make his escape? He climbed through the window and with surprising agility scrambled onto the roof. I could not go after him, but I called for help. When I turned, I saw the body of my wife lying on the bed and the body of the man Fabian lying on the floor. Oh, words cannot express my utter horror and remorse. I think I wept and hurled myself on the floor in a frenzy of agony. Presently the door opened and the burgomaster entered. As soon as he saw me. Baron Frankenstein, what has happened? Oh, if you have a pistol, dare shoot me. Put an end to my life. I cannot live on. What has happened to Fabian? He is dead. Murdered by the monster. My wife is also dead. Murdered by the monster which you say you created. I did create him. And may God forgive me for that sin. It seems that my suffering is never to end. I am guilty of the murder of these innocent people. For months we have been striving to find that monster and to destroy him. If you are his creator, as you say, then it is your responsibility to find him and destroy him, Baron Frankenstein. I know it. I have communicated with the authorities, and there is talk of ordering your arrest. If you created a devil, you should be punished. Oh, have I not been punished enough? The people of the village murmur against you. They say that you should be hanged for these murders. Oh, I feel that I am going mad. I know that I turn this murderer loose upon society, that while he lives there may be other murders. Therefore I swear a sacred oath that while there is breath in my body, while I live I shall devote my life to tracking him down. We feel that if you remain here, the monster will remain, that other lives will be in danger. So all men are against me. I am to suffer as my creature has suffered. I am to know what it is to be a fugitive, an object of hatred and scorn. It seems that his revenge is indeed complete. I advise you for your own sake to leave here today. I will leave very soon. Spare me a few minutes so that I may pray beside the body of my beloved wife. Then will my journey commence. Where it will take me, I know not. But if it be to the end of the earth, I will find him and destroy him. Oh, would that I destroyed him before I gave him life. So be it, Baron Frankenstein. I will see that you are not molested before you leave the village. Oh, await me downstairs. I will join you in a few minutes. So, Baron Frankenstein, you were forced to leave your native village. Yes. When I left my home, my first act was to try and find some clue by which I might trace the steps of my fiendish enemy. I wandered to the cemetery, and I prayed a while by the grave of the child William. Then I heard a sound behind me. I looked up, and it was the monster watching me. He did not speak, but fled away, and I pursued him, only to lose him. But he left a trail of death and disaster wherever he went, and for many months the ceaseless pursuit went on. Sometimes I would almost come up with him. Once, when I was traveling by night, the broad disk of the moon arose, and it shone upon a huge, ghastly, distorted shape which fled before me with more than mortal speed. I went to the coast, and by a strange chance, I saw the fiend hide himself in a vessel bound for the Black Sea. I booked my passage in the same ship, but he escaped, I know not how. I traveled to the wilds of Tartary and Russia, and once I came upon a peasant's home in the wilds of Tartary. I saw the peasant standing outside his cottage. He was wringing his hands in terror and said, I have seen the devil himself, 
A strange, horrid dream. Tell me, my friend, what have you seen? The devil himself, I tell you, sir. A huge, shambling creature with a countenance more hideous than I have ever seen. He forced his way into my cottage, took all my food, ate it himself, and placed his cold, clammy hands upon my throat. I screamed in mortal agony. Then he withdrew his hands and laughed. The most ghastly laugh that I have ever heard. Tell me, where did this creature go? I know not. He went out of my cottage and I was afraid to follow him. Here, take the silver to compensate you for anything which the monster stole from you. I must be close to him. I feel my search will soon end. Oh, that laugh again. He will kill us. Do not let him kill me. My quarry is near me. Stand aside, man. This time he shall die. What happened, Baron Frankenstein? Did you shoot the monster? Ask me no more now. I am tired. Later on, I will tell you what happened on that fateful day. present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein described his amazing adventures to Captain Walton of the ship Voyager. The Voyager had been icebound for many months, but the thaw was setting in, and the vessel was commencing to drift southward. Captain Walton brought this good news to the Baron. Our journey homeward is commencing. The ice is breaking up. There are several patches of water around the vessel. Very soon, we will be underway. I must leave the vessel at once. I know the monster is still alive. I cannot let you leave, Baron Frankenstein. You know that. You have no power to keep me here. Well, we are not making very much progress as yet. And I would sincerely like to hear the remainder of your story. I am writing it all in my journal. Well, I was telling you that in the wilds of Tartary, I encountered a peasant who was terrified because he had seen the monster. And when you were seeking to comfort the peasant, you heard the monster's laugh. Yeah. I drew my pistol and moved towards the door. To my surprise, the door opened and the monster appeared. My surprise was so great that I hesitated for a moment, and that hesitation was fatal. With incredible swiftness, the monster advanced and wrenched the pistol from my hand. And then he said, It is time that you and I spoke again, Frankenstein. You seem to have the powers of evil. Always you flee before me. Am I never to kill you? Shall I kill this peasant or will I bid him be gone? I do not wish him to hear what we have to say. Go, fellow. Do not return here for some hour. Because you are my creator, so should you be my friend. We are both outcasts now. Can we not also be friends? I have thoughts just as other men. If I had a friend to whom I could speak, and who could read to me and teach me many of the ways of the world. Perhaps I would find some strange happiness. You cannot return to your world, Frankenstein, but you could find loyal, faithful, and honest friendship with me. You have murdered my wife, my friends, and made me an outcast in this world. And yet you dare to ask for friendship. Is your life happy now? I have never known a moment's happiness since I created you. And I have never known a moment's happiness since I was created. Do you not owe it to me to give me some peace and happiness? To give me friendship? 
to give me your ideas. I owe you nothing but hatred. Was it my fault that men shrink from me and strive to kill me? Is it my fault that I defended myself by killing them and thus earning further hatred? Did you not refuse to make for me a companion? I could not bring myself to do it. And because of that, my rage knew no bounds, and I slew all whom you held dear. Now it is over. We are both outcasts, objects of hatred, scorn, and loathing. Let there be friendship between us, Frankenstein. I have sworn that I will never rest until I destroy that which I created. Mayhap I am to blame for many of the sufferings which you have endured, but the sin was mine. I created you. Now it is my solemn and holy duty to destroy you. And it is in my power to destroy my creator. You may destroy me. I will. But not until you have experienced further suffering. You must pursue me. You must live the same lonely life as I live. And perhaps I will receive a strange pleasure knowing that I have made my creator suffer. And perhaps I am receiving a strange pleasure knowing that you are paying for your sins, knowing that all men are still against you and will always be against you. But I admit the crime was mine in giving life to you. And my only purpose in living now is to end that life. Mayhap you will never end it. Farewell once again, my master. I offered you my friendship. I offered to live at peace with you, and you refused. Why should a man hate that which he has created? That is one of the things I will never understand. Farewell, Frankenstein. Until the next time. Did you pursue the monster that day, Baron Frankenstein? Well, he made his escape with incredible swiftness, and I set off after him. The search went on for many months, and the monster seemed to take pleasure in leading me on. Sometimes, indeed, he left marks in writing on the barks of trees or cut in stone that guided me and instigated my fury. I pursued my journey to the northward. The snow thickened, and the cold increased in a degree almost too severe to support. On and on we tramped, and occasionally I was rewarded by a glimpse of my deadly enemy. I realized that I was being led towards the frozen wastes of the north, and I procured sledge and dogs traveling across the icy wastes and occasionally finding clues of the inhuman devil which I had created. Then I lost him, and for a while I despaired of my own life. My dogs died. I wandered through the snow and the blizzard, gradually finding my way to this ship where you gave me your kindness and hospitality, Captain Walton. A strange and dreadfully tragic story, Baron Francis. Uh, this story is not over yet. You know now why I cannot return to England with you. There is no place for me in the haunts of men. I must kill the monster and then I will be content to die. Who is there? Uh, Mr. Boyd, sir. The men is beginning to slip. The ice is breaking more rapidly now, Captain. I think you'd better come up on deck. Very well, I shall come up now. I must leave the vessel. Make arrangements for me to be put ashore, Captain. You cannot leave the vessel, Baron Frankenstein. That would be madness. I must. You realize that I cannot let that monster roam about killing people at will? You must excuse me for a moment. You will be safe here in your cabin. You are not yet strong enough to leave your bunk. I will return and discuss the matter with you later. Come, Mr. Boyd. Oh. 
Well, have you any orders to give, Captain? We cannot carry any more sail at present. The vessel is moving slowly but steadily. Better so be kept upon this course, Mr. Boyd. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of the men seen signs of the monster? We have seen nothing for the past few days. I am glad. We are gradually gathering speed and making our way through the ice. By tomorrow, we should be well on the journey homewards. Then, I do not think we will have any more to fear from the monster. But what of Baron Frankenstein? Are we taking him with us? Of course. You do not think we could leave him here? Uh, the men are afraid of him, sir. They say that he is responsible for bringing that evil monster aboard. They say all their lives are in danger. I beg of you, put Baron Frankenstein ashore. He'll be an evil influence during the voyage. I am the commander of this vessel, Mr. Boyd. Baron Frankenstein is my friend. The men have been inactive all the while the ship has been icebound. They're ready for any mischief, and they've been grumbling lately. Well, you've started our homeward journey now. They fear that Baron Frankenstein, and they fear this monster. They say that the Baron must be put ashore. And I refuse. You do not know Baron Frankenstein's story as I know it. That man has suffered. Admittedly, it was through his own sin, but he could not have realized what misery he was to bring into the world and into his own life. He has suffered enough, and I say that he is to stay aboard this ship until we reach England. If anyone attempts to harm him, they will answer to me. But what if that monster comes aboard? What if it means loss of life? All the officers are armed. If the monster comes aboard, we will shoot. Uh, it would be easy for the monster to come aboard. There is ice all around the ship. There is water on one side of the ship. We can watch the icebound side. And what if the crew mutiny? If the crew mutiny, they will be dealt with. Gather them here, and I will address them. All hands on deck. Let the officers stand with me, Mr. Boyd. So far, this voyage has been a success, and will not be marred by any signs of mutiny on the part of the crew. I was only trying to do my duty in telling you what the men felt, sir. I am aware of that, and I am going to deal with the men. I assume I have the loyalty of the officers. We will obey you, sir. But we are afraid of this monster. If you will remember, he once attacked me. I do remember that. All hands on deck now, sir. Men, it has been reported to me that some of you are showing signs of discontent. For the greater part of this voyage, you have all given me your loyalty. And you have assisted me to make the journey a success. I ask you now not to mar that voyage by any murmurs of mutiny... I am told that some of you are afraid of my friend and guest, Baron Frankenstein. There is no need for you to fear him. He is a gentleman who has suffered. I know his story, and I feel deeply for him. As regards the strange monster which has sometimes come aboard this vessel, I can assure you that all the officers are armed, and if he comes aboard, they will shoot. Attempt to mutiny and disobey my orders, then you will meet with the punishment that is given to mutineers. Now trust in me, men. I will take you back home safely. And remember, if any harm comes to my guest, Baron Frankenstein, the man who harms him shall die. That is all. You may go. <coughs> Baron Frankenstein, how did you get up here? I forced myself to leave my bed. I heard what you said, Captain. But your men need have no fear. I will go ashore now. Certain members of the crew of the Voyager objected to the presence of Baron Frankenstein on board. But Captain Walton addressed his crew and informed them that the Baron was his guest. Then, to the surprise of everyone, Baron Frankenstein tottered up onto deck. He was weak and ill, and he supported himself with difficulty. He informed Captain Walton that he intended to leave the ship immediately. Baron 
Frankenstein, I cannot allow you to go ashore. This is no affair of yours, Captain Walton. You dare not keep me here against my will. Besides which, your crew do not desire to have me aboard the vessel. The crew will obey my orders. I have a duty to do. I cannot send a man to certain death. Captain Walton, I appreciate your feelings, and I thank you for your friendship and for all that you have done for me. Do you not realize that life for me is over? I created a monster, and that monster has gradually destroyed me, torn down the structure which surrounded me, killed my friends, my loved ones, made me an outcast. I live only for one thing, to witness the death of the monster. If you take me back to civilization against my will, you will be condemning me to torture, knowing that all men hate and despise me because of the crime which I committed. I am already destroyed, although there is life in my body, and that life cannot be extinguished. It must not be extinguished until my creation has been destroyed. Now I beg of you, let me go. We shall not meet again. Very well, Baron Frankenstein. The choice is yours. You may leave this ship. There is still ice for you to walk across. I will have a rope ladder lowered at once. But I shall always feel it on my conscience that I deserted you. Left you here to perish in the white waste of the north. For me, death will be a merciful relief. So go, Captain. And when you return to England, you may publish the notes in your journal so that all may know that it is folly, that it is a grave sin to usurp the rights of God. I have suffered as men have seldom suffered. And when the monster dies, then shall I make atonement. To the members of your crew, I also say farewell. I am glad that none of them has suffered because of my misdeed. Now I must... He's correct. I knew he had not the strength. I knew he should not have come on deck. What shall we do, Captain Walton? We cannot put him ashore in his present state, and yet we cannot remain here. The vessel must go on. I hardly know what to do. Uh, I think Alan Frankenstein is trying to speak. I am to be cheated of my vengeance... I know it. I feel for the first time the icy clutch of death. Come close to me, Captain Walton, and hear what I say. What is it, Baron Frankenstein? Should you see the monster again, bid your men to fire and shoot to kill. I promise you I will do that. But we may never see the monster again. I must not die leaving him alive leaving him to wander the earth. It is not fair, for this is indeed my greatest punishment. But you may not die. Let me give orders that you are carried down to the cabin. There we will seek to revive you. Oh, it is too late for that. Even now, all grows dim. Oh, God, forgive me for the great sin which was mine. Let no others be punished because of my folly and my pride. I have suffered because of my ambition, and I have paid the penalty. I go now to join my beloved Elizabeth, my friend, and I beg thy forgiveness. O oh Lord, that which I created has destroyed me. Now I go to my creator, hoping for his abundant mercy. Is there anything we can do for you, Baron Frankenstein? Nothing, Captain Walton. Safe to keep a close watch for the monster. I commend my soul to God. And I beg that you consign my body to the dark black water. That is the only favor I ask. I am coming, Elizabeth. All these long and weary months have passed, and soon we shall meet again. Oh, Elizabeth, my loved one, I long to be with you. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. 
Uncover your head, friend. Baron Frankenstein has passed away. May God receive his soul. Will you carry on the consummation, Captain? Is his body to be confined to the sea? His body shall be confined to the sea, and my journal shall tell of the horrors and the suffering which he underwent. Look, there, coming across the ice. The monster. Ready with your pistol, Ben? He approaches the ship. See how he leaps across the ice. I am afraid. Show no fear. We are ready to deal with him. He is leading the rope ladder. Shall we fire? Wait. Do not fire until I give the order. He is coming aboard. Wait until I give the word to fire. My master. My creator. What ails him? Let me speak with him. How, monster? Baron Frankenstein is dead. Destroyed by your hatred and vice. Now you shall die. Fire, men. Ah! Uh, you would destroy me. The blood pours from my wounds. But I still have life. Let me look on the body of Frankenstein. Shall we fire again, Captain? No, wait. Frankenstein. You are dead, victim of my hatred, victim of your own selfishness. Oh, Frankenstein, I am filled with remorse, and yet soon I am to die. They have dealt me mortal wounds, Frankenstein, my creator. I mourn for you. You say you mourn for him? And yet you drove him to his death. Your diabolical vengeance destroyed your creator. Thank you that I do not deserve your sympathy. I swear that after the murder of Claval, I was heartbroken and overcome. I pitied Frankenstein and hated myself. But I discovered that he still sought for happiness. While I, his creature, could live on in misery and loneliness. Men have forced me to murder. Loneliness has made me bitter. And now he who gave me life is dead. I swear I was not born to hate. But men turn from me. And my creator would not aid me. He offered you death. Does any man seek death while he may yet find happiness in life? Frankenstein welcomed death. He sought only to live so that he might destroy you. There lies my creator, white and cold and dead. You hate me. All men hate me. But your hatred cannot equal that which I regard myself. I was sought the friendship of Frankenstein. Should there not be friendship between the creator and his creature? But because he is dead, so shall I die. Be your men not to fire on me again. You can see that I am mortally wounded. Tell me, what was Frankenstein's last wish? His last wish was that his remains should be confined to the sea. His last wish shall be carried out, and I shall carry it out. Look you over the side of the vessel. See you not that deep black pool of water? That shall be the grave of Frankenstein and his creature. With my last remaining strength, I raise his body in my arms. A creator and creature will lie in cold death together beneath the dark, unfriendly ocean. He is taking the body, Captain. Shall we shoot him? No, he is soon to die. Let us watch. I am about to leave this world. And you are the last of humankind who will ever behold me. Even now you shrink from me with horror and loathing. And him whom I hold in my arms gave me this hideous form. Condemned me to a life of loneliness. Yet he was my creator. And instead of loving his creature, he hated him, sought to destroy him. So I sought vengeance on all men. I turned against him who had given me life. Let, let every man learn of the story. 
Tell them the truth. Tell them that the hideous diabolical monster from which whom all men turn has feelings just as other creatures. And by those feelings, so was he forced to wickedness and crime. Frankenstein, my master, that which you created is now to be destroyed. With faltering strength, I carry you to your last cold, unfriendly resting place. Did I kill him, Captain Walton? No. He goes to his death of his own free will, and now in some strange way I feel sorry for this monster. He has excited my pity. I will not live. But Frankenstein goes with me where I go. I led him across the world, the creator following his creature. Still I am suffering. Still I know remorse because Frankenstein is dead. But I know the suffering which I feel now will soon be ended. Watch and rest assured that I die. Come, Frankenstein. I hold your cold body fast. As I destroy you, thus will I destroy myself. Nevermore will man learn the secret of how to create man. Farewell, all mankind. Frankenstein and his creature now vanish forever from mortal ken. I have barely the strength to climb over the rail, bearing my burden, but I must die. We go now, Frankenstein, to know only peace and blissful freedom from suffering. Look on us, Captain. Let your men look on us. No other shall ever behold us. I go now with my creator. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves old-time radio or the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, get the email newsletter, visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise you can find other podcasts that I host. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Weird Darkness's Retro Radio. Retro Radio